Pinball machines have a lot of lights. All of my machines have old style incandescent bulbs, just like they originally had when these machines were made in the 80s and 90s. Modern machines use LED bulbs, and it seems like most people have switched their old machines to LED bulbs too. And there are good reasons for that. LEDs are brighter, LEDs are more vivid and allow better color control, and LEDs use less power and run cooler to help preserve electronics and artwork. But there are some drawbacks to using LEDs in older machines. Aesthetically, LEDs can look out of place in vintage machines, but that's subjective. There are two main technical problems when using LEDs in old pinball machines that were not designed for them. Ghosting and strobing. This is my getaway running the original incandescent bulbs. And here it is after replacing all of the inserts with LEDs. You can see the LED inserts are much brighter, which is exactly what I was going for. There is some ghosting visible on the two lamps above the supercharger ramp. Those lamps aren't supposed to light during attract mode. You can see the incandescent bulbs aren't lit at all, but the LEDs are flashing dimly. Ghosting is when controlled lamps turn on when they're not meant to. For instance, particular lamps lighting at inappropriate times during the light show, or some lamps staying dimly lit all the time. LED strobing is also a problem here. Strobing is when a lamp rapidly flickers on and off when it's supposed to be solidly lit. For me, strobing is the key problem with LEDs and pinball machines, and it's why I've resisted using LEDs in all of my machines. Strobing is especially noticeable on games that fade or dim controlled lamps to drive them at a lower intensity. But aside from that, strobing also occurs all the time in pinball machines, just as a result of how these machines drive their lights. Even when a controlled lamp appears to be solidly lit, it's actually being flashed rapidly on and off. Lamps and pinball machines are multiplexed into a matrix. The pinball machine doesn't drive all of the lamps simultaneously. Instead, the machine rapidly cycles through all of the lamps, lighting each individual lamp briefly, once every 16 milliseconds. When a lamp is turned on, it's only lit for about 2 milliseconds out of every 16 milliseconds. So even when a lamp is solidly lit, it's actually being flashed rapidly at about 60 times a second. The strobing is not visible to me if I'm staring at the machine, but it's uncomfortable and disorienting when I'm moving my eyes to track the ball across the playfield. It's hard to describe the feeling, and even harder to capture it on video. When my eyes are moving across the playfield, any lamps that are lit with LEDs don't move smoothly across my vision. LED lamps are not lit consistently, so their position seems to change unpredictably. Sometimes they are there, and sometimes they are not. That's disorienting, and it makes it very difficult for me to track the ball as a moving target. There are a couple solutions to address these issues. Ghosting can be prevented by using non-ghosting bulbs. These use additional resistors to limit stray voltage in the lamp matrix circuit. Regular LED bulbs lack those additional resistors and are therefore susceptible to ghosting. Non-ghosting LEDs work so well that they've become the standard bulb to use for indicator lamps that are controlled by the lamp matrix. Regular LEDs are typically only used in general illumination. Strobing is a bit more complicated. Strobing is inherent to how this era of pinball machine multiplexes the controlled lamps in a matrix. So if you use LEDs on these types of machines, you are going to have strobing. But whether you are sensitive to it or not is a matter of your own perception. Some people seem to be especially susceptible to the effects of strobing, while others don't notice it at all. I find this really interesting. I'll leave some information in the description about it. There are some bulbs that use a digital capacitance circuitry to try to reduce strobing, but the best way I know how to reduce strobing is to use an add-on circuit board called LED OCD. LED OCD is an add-on lamp controller that alleviates all of the negatives of LEDs. LED OCD basically makes LEDs behave like incandescents while still retaining the brightness and color benefits of LEDs. LED OCD eliminates LED ghosting, eliminates LED strobing, smooths how the LEDs transition between on and off, allows individual control of the brightness of each lamp, and allows individual control of the speed and timing of how each lamp transitions between on and off. LED OCD is a small board that mounts in the back box. It connects in line in between the lamp driver board and the lamp harnesses, and completely takes over driving all of the controlled lamps. LED OCD reads the state of the controlled lamps from the original driver board's lamp matrix connectors, and then drives the lamps on its behalf. 
I ordered my LED OCD from Comet Pinball. Let's take a look at what comes uh, in the package. You've got some pre-made cables uh, for the rows and columns of the lamp matrix. That's these. Got a longer cable uh, for the power. Actually, it's a uh, ground cable. Uh, some instructions. And the board itself, a static safe bag, a Z connector for connecting the uh, ground cable, some standoffs and screws to install the board, and let's take a look at the board itself. And there it is. So these instructions are uh, really well written, uh, but there were some parts that I thought were a little bit confusing uh, just because of how it's phrased. Let's take a look at the instructions uh, online, probably a bit easier to read here. Hardware installation for LED OCD. Uh, I'm installing it in a WPC89 uh, machine, my getaway. So I'm using the WPC89 hardware, and I purchased it uh, in 2022, so it's uh, the latest revision. Uh, the part of the instructions that I thought was a little bit strange when I first read through them uh, was this part here with the lamp matrix uh, row and column connections. So uh, it, it says to disconnect any of the cables that you've got connected to your WPC driver board on any of these connectors, and then reconnect them to the LED OCD board on any of these connectors. Uh, it just seems really vague when I read through it, uh, especially when I was reading through the printed instructions that didn't have pictures um, because it's like just, you know, pull any of the cables that you've got off these and just put them onto these. Uh, and it just seems really vague. But if you look at the WPC driver board, it starts to make sense. Uh, these three connectors here, uh, 136, 137, and 138, are the uh, lamp matrix column connectors, and they're all electrically equivalent. So pin 1 on 137 is wired directly to pin 1 on 138. Uh, and even over here on this side connector 136, pin 9 on 137 and 138 uh, is electrically equivalent to this third pin over here on 136. So these three connectors are electrically connected. They're, they're the, basically the same connector. And it's the same deal over here on the, the row connections uh, that 133, 134, and 135 uh, are all wired together. They're electrically equivalent. Then when you're reconnecting those connectors to the LED OCD board, uh, it's kind of the same deal here uh, because these connectors are just mimicked. Uh, they, they look just like what you had on the WPC driver board. So anything that you remove from the uh, columns connector, you reconnect to the columns connectors on the LED OCD, and same deal with the with the rows. Anything you disconnect it from the rows, you reconnect to the rows on LED OCD. What what kind of threw me off when I was looking at these instructions before um, I saw the pictures uh, was that you know these connectors are not all the same. Some of these are rows and some of these are columns. 
Um, so how can you just say connect it to any available connector? Well, it's because they're sized differently. Uh, these are you know dot one hundred and these are dot one five six, and they're also keyed differently. So uh, you can't plug something into the wrong connector because it just doesn't fit. So you just plug it in wherever it fits. But that was the only part that threw me off. Uh, otherwise, the instructions are uh, really well written, uh, very specific, and uh, easy to do. The LED OCD board mounts uh, at the bottom right of the back box in this empty sp spot here. Um, I chose to cut off the uh, ground braid here just to avoid the possibility of that shorting to the bottom of the LED OCD board. I'm not sure that's required. Uh, it just made me feel better to do it. Uh, so you just drill some holes um, where these standoffs fit. Uh, I only drilled holes in the in the front because that's really all I had easy access to. I didn't want to mess around with trying to drill holes in the back. Uh, you connect the ground cable from the LED OCD board to the ground connector on the WPC driver board. Uh, and then the connector that you had to remove from the WPC driver board to connect the LED OCD cable, uh, you just reconnect that uh, using a Z connector to an empty connector that's on the, the new LED OCD ground cable. Uh, pull off your lamp matrix connectors from the WPC driver board and plug them back into the LED OCD board. Uh, and then the LED OCD board comes with a new cable for uh, the rows. That's your red cable. And that goes uh, to one of the row connectors on the WPC driver board and then connects to the LED OCD board. And then same thing with the columns connector. Uh, that's the yellow cable. Uh, the 156 pitch connector goes to the WPC driver board and the smaller dot 100 pitch goes to the LED OCD board. Uh, and these two cables are keyed so that you can't plug them into the wrong spot. And that's it. So let's give that a try. So like I said, I removed the end of the ground braid. I don't know if that was necessary, but it made me feel a little bit better. Next step after that is to remove the lamp matrix row and column connectors from the WPC driver board. Now, my wiring here isn't standard. I've got my custom tachometer installed. So the bright white and bright yellow cables you see here are part of that. But suffice to say, you would just remove whatever connectors you've got that are connected to the lamp matrix row and column headers. Then use the LED OCD as a template for the uh, to drill holes at the bottom of the back box. So I've installed the standoffs and then marked uh, their position at the bottom of the back box. And then I only drilled out uh, two holes, the two front holes, just because I didn't have easy access uh, to drill the back holes. My drill is a bit too big. Then you install the LED OCD with the uh, included screws. Uh, I only installed the front two screws because I only drilled the front two holes. Then take your uh, original lamp matrix row and column connectors and plug them into the uh, suitable position on the uh, LED OCD board. Then plug in the ground cable. Uh, that plugs into the top right of the WPC driver board. Then connect the uh, row and column cables that came with the LED OCD between the LED OCD board and the uh, original connectors on the WPC driver board. And that's it. At that point, you can double check the instructions and double check your work and turn it on. Here's what LED OCD looks like on the default settings. You can see the ghosting is gone from the lamps over the supercharger ramp. And if you look closely at a single lamp, you can see that the LED OCD is ramping the LEDs on and fading them off. So they behave a lot like incandescents. One of the benefits of LED OCD is the ability to fine tune the behavior of each individual lamp. I haven't done that yet. Also, unfortunately, I've got the glass on in the LED OCD footage, but the glass is off in the other ones. So it's not a great comparison. But that doesn't matter much because one of the things that I've learned after installing LED OCD 
is that comparison videos like this do not do it justice. There are some light shows that look horrible with LEDs and really benefit from LED OCD, but Getaway's Attract Mode already looked pretty good with LEDs. For me, the main selling point of LED OCD is that it completely eliminates the effects of strobing. You can see how different the high-speed footage looks before and after LED OCD. Now, I don't have high-speed eyeballs, so it might seem a little academic to use high-speed footage to justify the benefit. But even though I can't directly see the strobing when I'm staring at a machine, the effects of strobing while I'm playing are very apparent to me. I normally get uncomfortable playing machines that have LEDs, and I have a hard time tracking the ball across the playfield. But after installing LED OCD, all the effects of strobing are gone. For me, this is the key benefit of LED OCD, and I wouldn't consider installing LEDs in any of my machines without it.